Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about something that we're all familiar with, change. There may be a number of things that come to mind when you hear that word. Maybe you were one who resists change. Maybe it's really hard for you. Maybe you immediately think about someone you wish you could change, but you realize that they may never change because that's the way they've always been. Maybe you think about how much things have changed since you were a child. In our women's Bible study homework this week, we had a question asking us to reflect on um, the changes that we've seen in our lifetime in the moral and spiritual culture. Believe me, we could have spent the entire class session discussing that one. Maybe the first thing that came to mind when I said the word change was how much life has changed in the last 18 months since COVID happened. A sobering reality is that much of the change we experience, we have no control over. But as followers of Christ, we can affect change that we see in the moral and spiritual culture around us. We can strive to know God more, study his word, and live in obedience to it. By doing these things, we are being salt and light to a lost world. Do we, as modern day Christians, justify choices that God's word clearly calls sin because it is 2021 and we think we must change with the times? I want to challenge us all to remember two important truths. God has not changed and God's word has not changed. Malachi 3, 6 says, I, the Lord, do not change. Hebrews 13, 8 tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. From Isaiah 40, Verse 8, we learn that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stand, will stand forever. Jen Wilkin, a wonderful Bible study author, said something that really puts things in perspective for me. <clears throat> Just as my assurance of salvation rests in the fact that God cannot change, my hope of sanctification rests in the fact that I can. Trusting in that sanctification process, that when I abide in him, he will continue to mold me into his image, gives me so much hope and encouragement every day. I love Ezekiel 36 verses 26 and 27. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Hopefully these truths bring us comfort in these turbulent and changing times. Life can be difficult. There is little consistency. Let us not forget that we worship the one true God who is responsible for all creation, holds all power in his hands, is limitless, knows all things, is sovereign over all things. We cannot say any one of these things truthfully about ourselves or any other person. That is why he is God and we can put our trust in him. I want to close with this. Remember back in Exodus 3 when God proclaimed of himself, I am who I am. Truthfully, that statement has always confused me. It felt like a riddle. I wasn't it wasn't until recently that I, as I was reading a lesson on this chapter written by the Proverbs 31 Ministries team that helped me to understand and be in awe of this statement. They said, I am who I am conveys his infinite nature. His being is self-sufficient. He is regardless of anything that does or doesn't happen. His character is immutable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His existence is eternal. He has always been and will eternally be God. He himself is central. God is at the center of all things. These statements were true about God at the time of creation, and they are equally true about him today. When our changing life gets to be overwhelming, let us remember to hold on to these truths. We can put our hope and trust in the God who does not change.